Hello, I'm Valerie Schuster, Managing Director of Livalta. Thank you for having us and for letting us share our view on how we use insect protein in the feed industry. So who are we? As Livalta, we are part of AB Agri, and AB Agri is the agriculture division of Associated British Foods. As AB Agri, we are a feed business reaching across the whole value chain from farm to fork. So we have crop, we have compound feed, we have vitamin and mineral premixes for animals, specialty nutrition for young animals, ingredients such as proteins, additives, as well as data and technology for better farm management and for the management of supply chains, ours and the ones of our customers, for example, in terms of CO2 footprint. Livalta, we set up the business about a year ago because we believe we have a role to play in solving the global protein challenge, i.e. feeding an ever-growing population with new and better proteins. And we think through new technologies, we have the opportunity to do so. So while today we are a small startup, we have the ambition to contribute to making our food systems more responsible by becoming a leader in responsible, functional and protein rich ingredients for feed and for food. How will we do that? We will source and produce local, responsible and traceable proteins, for example, from algae or from single cell or from insects. That's why we're here or giving value to co-products from industry. We then seek to own science and technology platforms to transform these ingredients into products for feed and food. If we look at the animal feed protein market today, it's about 300 million tons and the majority of it is soybean meal. The new or responsible proteins, are we, as we call them, they're still very small in volume, but there is significant growth potential. So, for example, while Rabobank estimate that insect protein today are about 10,000 tons sold into feed and protein sold into supermarket bird food is not part of that. But there is significant potential for growth if the industry managed to meet the needs of the feed industry. And what are these? From a commercial and management perspective, we expect from a high value protein that it is safe, nutritious and affordable. So we need the quality to be high and constant, a protein content above 50 percent, highly digestible for animals. We need the protein to be safe, i.e. no undesirable such as heavy metals in there. And we need it to be traceable so we always know where our proteins come from. In terms of supply, we need the supply to be reliable. We cannot sell feed to our customers one month and not sell to them the next month. And we need scale. And when I talk insect protein in terms of scale, what we would look at is probably 20 to 50,000 tons. And that brings us to another lever. So we need the benefits of scale to be cost competitive because we expect the price of insect protein to go down. At the moment, fish meal always seems to be the benchmark, but the price in the market will be below that. And we need the protein to be responsible. So we have a responsibility towards people, i.e. our consumers, but also, especially if you think of an African context where you would have an outgrower scheme so that the growers can make a livelihood from it. We have a responsibility towards the well-being and health of animals towards the environment to produce better proteins with a lower environmental footprint and towards the economy. Because again, what we would want to do is provide safe, nutritious and affordable food to an ever growing population. So it's about for the insect industry to solve the riddles around feedstock, energy use, processing, to become more competitive while at the same time to become safer and stay nutritious. And with that, I'll hand over to Ingrid. Good morning, everybody. First, let me give you a background of our activities. At AB Agri, we have been involved in research projects looking at different insect species, covering several aspects from the nutrition assessment to production at scale. The most recent one is the Innovate UK funded project, the Insect Revolution, with EntoCycle as the lead partner. As a feed company, 
we have to operate within a legislative framework and rules that apply to producers of any type of food or feed in the European Union. Farmed insects fall under the group of farmed animals and the regulation states which type of feed can be fed. As of now, insect feedstock can contain vegetable and plant waste or co-products, unprocessed food waste, but excluding meat and fish. Therefore, catering and restaurants leftovers are not allowed. With regards to the processed insect meal itself, it can be only fed to aquatic animals and pet. A fine distinction, however, is that Live insect larvae can be fed to all livestock. Also, the extracted fat can be used in chicken and swine feed. However, a change in legislation is expected to allow the use of insect meal in poultry feeds as early as end of this year, as well as using catering waste as feedstock for insects, which would give a welcome boost to the growth of the insect farming sector. Currently, the main species farmed for feed are the larval status of the black soldier fly, the common house fly and the mealworm. There are differences in composition depending on the species as well as on the growth stage and the feedstock they are grown on. But in general, the protein content of the whole meal when dried would range between 30 to 42 percent. Fat content is quite high and would range between 20 to 30, 35%. And larvae also contain circa 10% chitin as well as minerals. As the high fat content would restrict the use in some animal feeds, I will go into details later on, most producers offer a defatted meal, which also would at the same time increase the protein content of up to 60%. Therefore, insect farming would provide several products, a protein meal, the extracted oil, and the non-digested waste, which can be used as a fertilizer. So how would a feed producer go about incorporating insect protein in an animal feed? I'm showing here an example of aqua feeds, but the same principle would apply to all livestock feeds. Farmed animals don't need specific feed ingredients, but they need the nutrients, the protein and the edge and the energy, etc., supplied by those ingredients. And feeds are formulated to a specification such as the protein content, lipid content, which is again determined by the requirements of the animal. For example, tilapia is being fed to feed with a 30% protein and 5% fat. But the Sebring feed contains a 45% protein and more than 20% fat. So the feed formulation software matches the nutrient content of the ingredients with the feed specification. And this is being done at the lowest possible cost of the final feed, the product. So therefore, in an ideal world, a feed manufacturer can choose from a wide selection of ingredients. And using example of aqua feeds, fish meal is usually the reference ingredient, the golden standard, with the only downside that supply is limited. Other available protein sources are based on plant protein concentrates and animal byproduct meals, each with a typical pros and contrast, but insect meals would need to compete with those ingredients, and especially uh, according to price. So, as a feed company again, what do we expect from an insect protein from a nutritional perspective? It should have an adequate nutrition profile. It should have protein above circa 50% and a balanced amino acid content. Um, it should be highly bioavailable to the animal with digestibility is above 85%. Low levels of indigestible nutrients, which are just a filler, for instance, low fiber. It should be highly palatable and with an efficient nutrient utilization. Also, it should show high quality. That means, for example, no heat damage, which could occur during drying or oil extraction. 
Also, absence of anti-nutritional factor would be very positive. And also important are the physical properties. Uh, ingredients should not negatively influence the, neg the pelleting or extrusion process. So this brings me to the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening.